Okay, set. Okay. We're going to start with, as you see in the background, we're going to start with comet and squint and non comet and squint. Now, what do you make of this? Now, for you to understand this, you need to know what is angle of squint. Now, what is angle of squint? Now, when I have to actually understand squint, I need to quantify squint. Yes, it's not enough if I just say I have a left isotropia, I have a right isophoria, or I have a hypertropia, whatever, whatever. Yes, I need to quantify it. Always I need an objective assessment of things. So for strabismus or squint, we need to measure the angle of deviation, how much that eye is deviated from the center. All right. So that is angle of squint. Now, I'm not going into the details of angle of squint right away because I just want to stop with committant and non committant in this little short, ultra short video. Now, when we measure angle of squint, okay, somehow we are measuring. That's not our botheration, okay? Okay, so I need to get my values. When I get my values, I always get my values in various directions. Now, what directions am I talking about? So, when I measure squint, it's not just in the primary gaze. I hope you know what is a primary gaze. Now, primary gaze is when you're looking straight. Yes, when I'm looking straight, that is my primary gaze. So, that's not the only position where I measure the angle of Squint. So I actually have to measure in the nine gazes. I hope you know we have nine gazes the straight, elevation, depression, dextro, levo, that is dextro version, levo version, then dextro elevation, dextro depression, levo elevation, levo depression. So I have totally nine gazes. So I am actually supposed to measure the angle of squint in all the nine gazes. Is that clear? Now, when I measure in all the nine gazes, yes, angle of squint in all nine gazes. And if the angle is the same in all nine gazes, it is commented. Okay. And if it is different in different gazes, if the angle of squint is different, say in Dextro version and it's different in Levo version, then it is a non commutant or incommutant squint. So that is all that you have to know about what is a commutant squint and what is a non commutant squint. I hope what is written on the board is clear for you guys. So when I measure the angle of squint, depending upon whether it is the same or whether it is different in different gazes out of the nine gazes, we call it as committed and incommitted squid. Now, let me give you this example. One second, let me see what I can show you. Now, if you look at this picture, where you have the nine gazes, right? Now, in all these nine gazes, the angle between the two eyes, the angle formed between the two eyes, the angle of deviation is the same. So, this is an example of commutant squint. Now, don't worry too much. I'll show you a non commutant squint. It's very, very obvious to you. See, look at this picture. Look at this picture. Now, look at this primary gaze, the center one. Look at the top one. Look at this this one. Oh my goodness. Okay, look at this one. All right. And look at this one. Okay, this one. The second one here. So look at the center, look at the top, and look at this. I don't want you to see all the nine, you'll get confused because ophthalmologists themselves get confused. So I want you to look at the center, look at this picture and look at the top middle. Now, do you think the orientation of the eyes are the same in all the three? Do you think so? Just use your, you don't have to be an ophthalmologist, you don't have to be a doctor to answer my question. Just look at it as if you're looking at some picture. You're just looking at some picture. 
obviously it's not right it's not the same so this is an example of incompetence quint so i'm just stopping it right here because my laptop needs some charging all right so now you got what is a competent quint and a non competent squint i'll get back to you right away sorry guys i have to interrupt but anyway non competent and in and competent squint i just had just this much to tell you okay so if you know this much that's more than enough i get back to you in a bit